Hello everyone and welcome to today's video on Top 15 Node.js Interview Questions at Simply Learn. Node.js is a very powerful event-driven programming language which powers everything from small-scale web application to a large-scale web application. So whether you are a beginner or a professional, do check out this top 15 most important interview questions. Now before we move on, just a quick info guys, Simply Learn has got Monstack Developers Master Program. With this program, you can become job ready with Full Stack Developer Course, which is built in collaboration with IBM. This Full Stack Developer Course will advance your career as a Monstack Developer. You will learn top skills such as MongoDB, ExpressJS, React, and Node. Plus, you'll also get an idea about Git, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So guys, hurry up now and join the course. The course link is mentioned in the description box. So let's get started. So guys, let's start with top 15 Node.js interview question. So our first question is, what will be the output of the following code? And the code is as follows. Console.log1, set timeout, then arrow function, console.log2, then comma zero, promise dot resolve, then again arrow function, console dot log three, and then finally console dot log four. So let us analyze the execution order of the following code. So you could see all over here that we have console dot log one. Okay. So this is a synchronous operation, so it is going to run immediately. So here the first output is going to be one. Now if you see the second line all over here set timeout console dot log two then zero. Then uh, what is going to happen all over here that set timeout is going to schedule the callback to run a macro task queue. Okay, basically a task queue since it has a delay of zero milliseconds, so it is going to execute after the current execution of the stack and all the micro tasks are completed. Now, if you could see the next statement is promise dot resolve dot then then console dot log three. So this is basically scheduling a callback in the micro task queue. So promise jobs always run before the macro task, like set timeout. Okay. Then you have console.log4. So after the uh, event loop execution, so this synchronous code completes, the event loop executes and all the micro tasks before moving to the macro task are going to get executed. So here you can see uh, that micro task queue contains promise.resolve then console.log3. So it is going to run first. Now let us see the output order of the following code. So first output will be one, next will be four, then will be three, then it will be two. So that will be the execution order of this. So once again, I'll just recap it. So the synchronous code runs first, which is one and four as you can see all over here. Now promises dot then executes before the set timeout due to the event loops priority for the micro task queue. And set timeout executes last, even though it has a delay of zero millisecond because it goes to the macro task queue. So I hope so, you would have got a brief idea regarding this. Now let us move ahead and try to understand the next question. Now our next question is, why is process dot next tick is faster than set immediate? Now, if we try to understand that process dot next dot tick actually schedules the callback in the micro task queue, okay, which basically executes before the next event of the loop cycle. And if I talk about set immediate, it basically schedules the callback in the check phase of the next event loop cycle. So first, your synchronous code is going to run, okay, then you can see it from the previous example, then uh, the set immediate was working. So the process dot next tick runs before set immediate. So that's why it is making it faster. So guys, process dot next tick basically schedules the callback in the micro task queue, which executes before the next event in the loop cycle. And set immediate schedules the callback actually in the check phase of the next event loop. That's why set immediate is actually slower as compared to process dot next tick. So if you try to run this code guys, so our output would be something like this. So first your synchronous code is going to run, then the output will be next tick and then the output will be set immediate. So process dot next tick runs before set immediate, thus making it appears faster. So this will be a solution for this question. 
Now let us discuss about our question number three. So this question is also asking the same thing. What this code is going to print? So you can see all over here that we have set timeout console dot log a zero process dot next tick then promise dot resolve and console dot log b. So let us apply the concept what we have learned in this question. So our execution order will be something like this. The first output will be d as usual. Then you could see the next output will be process dot next tick. Okay, so option b. Okay, then our promise dot resolve is going to happen. Okay because it is going to run in the next micro task uh, queue. So the output will be C. And finally, you'll get the output A. So uh, this can be asked in your interview, which is kind of a trickier question. And But if you practice the concepts, I think so, it will be very easy for you. Now let us move ahead and discuss about our next question. So our question is, how does Node.js handles multiple CPU cores? So as we all know that Node.js is actually a single threaded, which means that it runs on one core by default. To utilize multiple CPU cores, we used cluster module, okay, which is cluster.fork to create child processes and also worker threads to execute CPU intensive task. So you can tell something like this. Now let us discuss about our question number five. The question number five says that how do you prevent callback hell in Node.js. Now, what is a callback hell, guys? So, callback hell occurs due to nested callbacks. If you want to avoid it, you can use promises, okay, where you can also use async await, you can use modular functions, okay. So, these can be your solutions for, you know, preventing a callback hell in Node.js, which is basically signifying the nested callbacks which we are trying to do. So this was an easy question. Let us discuss about our question number six. So our question number six is, explain the event loop phases in Node.js. So the event loop phases in the Node.js are as follows. So you have to tell in this question about timers, pending callbacks, idle prepare, poll, check, close callbacks. Now if we discuss about timer, they basically execute the set timeout and set interval callbacks. And if we talk about pending callbacks, it is, executing the deferred input output callbacks. If we discuss about idle or prepare, then it is basically dealing with the internal operations. Whereas poll, it is basically retrieving the new input output events. If we discuss about check, it basically executes the set immediate callbacks. And finally, we have the close callback, which basically executes cleanup tasks like socket.on, okay, something like this. So just explain with the example in this question, and uh, which will make up for you. Now, let us move ahead and discuss about question number seven. So our question number seven is, why is await inside a loop is a bad idea? So await inside a loop runs sequentially and it blocks a execution. So for example, let me show you one code. So you can see this is a bad example of sequential execution, okay? So for example, we did a for loop all over here and we are waiting for, you know, uh, to fetch the URL. So it is going to run one by one. The good example is you can use parallel executions. So for parallel execution, you could use promise.all, urls.map and fetch URL. So await actually runs inside a loop. So it is going to run sequentially, you know, so that's uh, making it a, you know, bad idea. So always prefer the parallel execution. This is also kind of a good practice and your interviewer might ask this question. Now, let us discuss about question number eight. So our question number eight is, what will be logged in the console? Okay, so let us see the given code. So our code is console.log start, set timeout, promise.resolve and console.log. Okay, let's see, do you remember the concept or not? So you can pause the video and try to think about the output. So guys, here is the answer for this. So console.log start, okay. So set timeout is the next, then we have promise and finally we have console.log. So if, if we can see, this is a synchronous event. So it is going to, you know, be printed first. Then set timeout is basically scheduling the timeout in zero millisecond. Promise is going to resolve this, okay. So this, 
and finally we have console.org end so first your start will be printed then end then promise and then timeout very basic now let us move ahead and discuss about question number nine so this is an interesting question it says what happens when you call require multiple times for the same module so in node.js when you use require to import a module it gets loaded and cached the first time and if you call require for the same module again then node.js does not reload the module instead it is going to return the cached version so this is the given uh, you know reasoning for this so what are the key points to remember like uh, if you're trying to import the modules they are loaded only once per application and subsequent require calls returns the cached module okay so this is a solution for this problem now let us discuss our next question so we have this question again so it is saying what is the difference between process dot next tick and set immediate so here we have to give like five differences of each one of them you can pause the video and think about it so here is a solution for this question the first is if you think about execution timing okay so the process dot next tick runs before the event loop as it continues it executes immediately after the current operation completes even before input output task and timer if we talk about set immediate it executes after the input output phase in the event loop it runs in the check phase meaning it gets executed after all input output callbacks now if we talk about priority then process dot next tick has the highest priority whereas if we talk about set immediate then it has the lower priority now if you call process dot next tick multiple times it will execute all callbacks before moving to set immediate now too many process dot next tick calls can block the event loop also and cause starvation which means preventing input output operations from running if we talk in terms of execution context then uh, process dot next tick is basically designed for quick task that needs to run before any other input output or timer events basically it used to modify the current operation before passing control back to the event loop whereas set immediate is designed for executing callbacks after input output operation and finally if we discuss about blocking the event loop so process dot next tick can cause starvation okay which means that it is called recursively so it prevents the event loop from moving to the next phase and blocking the input output and timers this prevents set timeout set immediate and input output callbacks from running whereas set immediate avoids the starvation where it allows the event loop to continue so these were some of the detailed differences between process dot next tick and set immediate you can use the same format to answer the question when it is asked by the interviewer now let us discuss about our next questions so our next question is how does node.js prevent blocking operation in a single threaded environment one of the very most important question so this can be asked in an interview so the answer for this solution could be something like this for event driven architecture it uses async callbacks okay for non blocking input output it uses libuv okay and it basically uses uh, worker threads for cpu heavy task so this is how you know it is preventing the blocking operations in a single threaded environment now let us discuss about question number 12 so this is a pretty easy question now can seem bit tricky but let us try to understand so our question is why does console.log 10 plus 5 returns 105 so the basic solution for this is that the 5 here is treated as a string so the output becomes 10 5 equals to 105 okay so it is just concatenated now let us move ahead and discuss about our next question so our next question is what is the difference between fs.read file and fs.create read stream okay now if we discuss about fs.read file so basically it loads the entire file into memory making it inefficient for the large files whereas fs.create stream reads the data in chunks preventing memory overflow now if we discuss uh, the major differences on these parameter like memory usage performance so 
For memory usage, fs.read file actually it loads the entire file. And fs.createRead stream is actually memory usage is low all over here because it is just only streaming the data. If we talk about performance, fs.read file is slower for a large file, whereas fs.createRead stream is actually faster. So this is what's about the major difference between them. Now let us move ahead and discuss about our question number 14. So our question number 14 says, what will be the output? So you can see all over here, we have created object with key and value properties. And B has this asynchronous function where console.log this.a. C has a function where console.log this.a. You have object B, object C, you are trying to understand. So let us analyze this JavaScript code, okay? So basically in regular function, this refers to the object that calls a function. And in arrow function, this does not refer to the calling object. Instead, it inherits this from the surrounding, meaning where the function is defined. Now, if you could see all over here that uh, b console.log this.a, the b here is an arrow function. And arrow function do not have their own this, okay? So instead of this, they inherit this from the surrounding scope, which is the global scope or the module in Node.js. And in global scope, this usually refers to window in the browser where window.a is undefined. If we talk about global or uh, strict mode in Node.js. So most probably the answer for this is going to be undefined. If we talk about C, object.c, so here C is a regular function, meaning this is determined by the calling object. Since object is calling C, so this refers to the object. Therefore, this dot A, where object dot A is one. So here the output will be one. Now, let us discuss about our final question. Now, the question is, what happens if you call res.end twice in an HTTP server? So basically, it is going to throw an error, okay? Which means it cannot set headers after they are sent. So this is basically the output. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope so. You would have enjoyed our today's video on top 15 interview questions at Simply Learn. Staying ahead in your career requires continuous learning and upskilling. Whether you're a student aiming to learn today's top skills or a working professional looking to advance your career, we've got you covered. Explore our impressive catalog of certification programs in cutting edge domains, including data science, cloud computing, cybersecurity, AI, machine learning, or digital marketing. Designed in collaboration with leading universities and top corporations, and delivered by industry experts. Choose any of our programs and set yourself on the path to career success. Click the link in the description to know more. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.